Hello guys, Griff here, and today I'm lifting the lid on more super secret Starfield features. Let's do it. Okay, stealing. How will stealing work in Starfield? From the traits screen we've already been shown, we already know there'll be a punitive system based on bounties, and this can go up or down depending on what faction you're aligned with. So for example, if you make a character with the Neon Street Kid trait, the bounty that factions put on your head when doing crimes is increased. <laughs> But there are faction allegiance bonuses that will decrease these bounties. When you do get a bounty, you will trigger bounty hunters, and these will come after you as a sort of disincentive to stealing. The more you steal, the tougher your bounty hunters will be. I think it will work more or less like Fallout, with sort of frontier justice meted out when you break the law. And by frontier justice, I mean people just straight up shooting you in the face. It will be on a scale too, I think, so first you'll get fined, then you'll get shot at, then when word spreads of your robberies, bounty hunters will get set loose. I don't think there'll be a jail like in the Elder Scrolls games, as those games are set in places with more established societies and actual criminal justice systems. But that said, security in Starfield will obviously be higher in big cities. So who's to say that in New Atlantis, which is the biggest city in the game, there's not some great big mega jail. Jail segments are some of my favourite moments in all of science fiction, like the jail in in Guardians of the Galaxy, or more recently, the Imperial Prison on Narkeena 5 in Star Wars Andor. So maybe there's a breakout mission set in a jail in Starf, but as for them chucking you behind bars for stealing a can of fuel or something, I think it's more likely that any nearby law enforcement will just find you, then shoot you. Next we're discussing shipbuilding, and we're about to get in depth, so stick with me here, but I think I know what happens when you delete part of your ship when it's already full of all the stuff stored in it. You won't lose those items. Instead, anything contained in a ship module, one that you've moved or deleted, will be stored at ship ports. The reason I think this is because the ship editing we've seen so far has only happened in a port. This port is called Vectera, which we can see here. It's a moon which features one of the ship ports so you'll have to fly to different ports in order to customise your ship. You can't just customise your ship wherever you want, which makes sense in all honesty. I mean, how are you going to move 10 tonnes of space metal when you're on your own on a desolate moon? And if ship editing does happen in ports like I think, your ship inventory overflow and decorations will probably be transported to a container in the base. This container then keeps them all nice and safe for if you want to move them to a new ship module. So that bubble head on your dashboard and all of yes, space medals won't be lost in the transition. Maybe the container will be unified across ports, meaning you can access it from anywhere you go. And if that's the case, Bethesda will have to come up with some in-game explanation for it from a lore point of view. Maybe they'll take down two birds with one stone and explain it in the same way they explain faster than light radio signals. They can just digitize all of your junk and transport it across space or something. Anyway, that's my guess. Let me know in the comments what you think. But at the very least, I do think ship customizing only happens at spaceports and your decorations within the ship are safely stored when you decide to change your ship modules around. Onto the transmog feature now, a feature I'm almost certain will be in Starfield. If you didn't know, transmogging is the ability to take the traits of one item and put it onto another, meaning that if you want the effects of one item but hate its aesthetics and how it looks to wear it, it's no trouble, you can just take its effects and put it on a piece of gear that's altogether more stylish. And the reason I think transmog will be in Starfield is because of the sheer amount of cosmetics in the game. As we've seen, you can make your characters look vastly different to each other, so style is obviously front and center to your Starfield character. Which makes me think that the devs are fully aware we don't want to look like a patchwork mess of clothes chosen only for their stats. You might find a helmet that gives you plus defense against headshot damage, but it's got an animal print paint job that makes you look like an 80s drag queen. With transmogging, you won't have to ruin your carefully curated style by wearing this helmet just for stats boost. Stick those stats on a better looking helmet like one with a zebra print that makes you look like a drag queen from the 90s, which was a way better decade. Most modern day sandbox RPGs feature transmogging. Assassin's Creed Valhalla has transmog, Hogwarts Legacy had transmog, so yeah, I think Starfield will also have transmog. 
Just on the topic of clothes and gear, I think there'll also be a quick chain system that allows you to group clothing and armor together in a single outfit that you can click between. Because I mean, look how cohesive these outfits look. These are some very put together characters. You'll also need a quick swap button for sections of the game that require spacesuits. Because how annoying would it be to go into the menu and having to equip your suit every time you exit your ship? It's not as if space suits are on by default when you head down to a planet either. Todd Howard has said that some planets have Earth-like conditions, so suits won't be necessary. As a result, I think there will definitely be hotkeys to make it much more convenient to swap between your spacesuits and outfits when you need to. But back on the topic of transmogging, if Bethesda shocks us all and have no transmogging whatsoever, I think there'll be an alternative somehow. Like what about upgrading and customizing gear through the game crafting mechanics? So if you find a piece of gear that makes you look cool but has rubbish stats, you can boot it up and add different abilities onto it. A bit like how in Skyrim, you could enchant weapons with different abilities. It would also mean that every item has a purpose. From the developer's point of view, it makes sense that they'd want players to actually use the stuff they painstakingly make, rather than take one look and never use them again. And to give each item and weapon a purpose, there's nothing better than transmogging. Or in the absence of that, just a really deep crafting system. I mean, there's got to be a workbench around somewhere. This is a Bethesda game. Now let's talk about what some of the weapons are we can expect in Starfield. And I don't mean the usual rifles and machine guns we've already seen. I mean the weird, exciting stuff. An example of this can be seen for a split second in the gameplay footage, where someone sets an enemy on fire with a mining laser. I love weapons like this. Weapons that aren't actually meant as weapons yeah, at yes. all. It's something Dead Space does really well. This is a tool used to excavate stuff, but hey, who's to deny the purpose of of cooking a space pirates. I bet Starfield is filled with stuff like this, ranging from ordinary melee weapons like hammers and wrenches to harpoons and flamethrowers. Starfield isn't a military shooter, so it shouldn't be filled exclusively with military grade equipment. And I think one way combat could really excel is if they give us more stuff like mining lasers, gravity field manipulators, maybe even non-lethal devices, like the nightstick from Minority Report that makes you want to throw up. Fallout is really creative with its weapons. I particularly like the junk jet, which fires any item you load into it and then lets you pick it up to use after. And this gives you potentially infinite ammo. And that's not even mentioning all the jury rigging and weapon building you can do at workbenches, which has got to be a feature in Starfield given its focus on nailing the first person shooting. We see plenty of shooting and combat in gameplay footage, so they're obviously itching to show it off. So yeah, if the mining laser is anything to go by, weapons won't be your usual conventional military hardware, which is great. Next up, land vehicles. Now, I explored this in a previous video and basically concluded that I think they're unlikely, which is very sad news. But the primary reason for that is because I think the terrain is going to be so diverse that any vehicle will struggle to navigate it properly. Imagine trying to get around this stuff. It's just going to be so frustrating. Also, if there were land vehicles, you would have thought Bethesda would have shown them off already. They'd be such a huge selling point. I get that planets are massive and it's a lot of distance to cover on foot, but Bethesda are building them to be walkable. And by that I mean look at the gameplay here. The player is on foot and they can go wherever they like, but the game is guiding them subtly down to this outpost here. It's clearly designed to facilitate the player yeah, being on foot. There's not really any reason to go driving off to a distant spot on the horizon. And if you did want to find a new location all the way across your planet, you can just fly your ship there. At the most, what I think you might have access to is some sort of jetpack. But but even that might not be in the game because Bethesda would then have to design all of the outposts around this jetpack. Imagine if you could just bypass an entire stealth section by jetpacking yourself over a wall. But there's just one problem. How will Starfield justify the complete lack of land vehicles? You've got access to your own massive spaceship, so why would you not be able to get your hand on a space rover? In Fallout, the exclusion of drivable cars was explained by telling you that all the cars in the game had broken down, which made sense lore-wise 
case, even if it didn't really make that much sense when you think about all the other functioning machines and robots in the game. But, you know, we could suspend our disbelief. Suspending our disbelief for Starfield, if it doesn't have land vehicles, is going to be a whole lot tougher. What's the justification there? It's going to have to be a good one. So while I don't think you'll be able to drive land vehicles in the game, I do think they'll be conspicuous in their absence. We'll end with this one, Easter eggs. What Easter eggs can we expect from Starfield? Well, we've already seen a possible one. Look at the name of the vendor here, Shepherds. This might be a reference to the Mass Effect protagonist, Commander Shepard, or maybe it's a nod to the astronaut, Alan Shepard, who was the first American in space. Or maybe it's a coincidence. I could be looking too much into that, but there's something more concrete than that Easter egg. Check out this book on the bookshelf. It's called Sailing Alone Around the World, and it's a real world book that came out out in 1900 by a guy called Joshua Slocum, and it details his adventures circumnavigating the globe. Not only does this book tie in with Starfield themes of loneliness and isolation in the face of infinite space, but the inclusion of this book has wider implications, showing that Starfield takes place in the real world rather than sharing a universe with Fallout or the Elder Scrolls. That said, there's nothing ruling out some of the more meta Easter eggs. Maybe Fallout's radio DJ 3Dog will return to present a new station in space. Or maybe there's a spaceship called Shadowmere in reference to your horse from Skyrim. Or maybe even Fallout 4's Jangles the Moon Monkey will show up as a collectible ship decoration. Not gonna lie, I would kinda love a nod to Jangles the Moon Monkey. It would have to be subtle in order to not take you out of the game, however. So what's more likely are mechanics crossovers. And by that I mean mechanics and features the game will have in common with past Bethesda games. An example of this is with the set of Neon having its own drug that people are addicted to. And where have we seen this before? In Oblivion, which had the drug Skooma, which when you took it, gave you heightened abilities. Or what about the watch you've got in Starfield? This is a lot like the Pip-Boy in the Fallout games. A wrist-mounted device that lets you browse the game's menus. From in-depth character customization to the ability to switch between third and first person, this is very much a Bethesda game in the mold of the games that came before it. So yeah, while there might not be a glaring make the liar easter egg to call back to Oblivion, there is precedent for Bethesda games borrowing features and themes from past games and expanding on them. Anyway, those were some features I think are coming to Starfield based on everything we've seen so far. But what do you think? Let me know what you think of my theories in the comments and if you've got theories of your own that I didn't mention, feel free to tell me about that too. And one last thing, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. That's always massively appreciated. And for more Starfield videos, subscribe to the channel.